Hi everyone. I wanted to just pop up on this Sunday morning and say hello to everybody. I've just been visiting the farmer's market in our local little village down the street from where I live. And it's a hot day, beautiful hot day. And I got myself a nice iced coffee. And I thought I'd just pop in and say hello to all of you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all your beautiful wishes because I was supposed to do a Facebook Live about three days ago and then I got the news literally like five or ten minutes before I was supposed to go on. I got a phone call from my brother in India saying my mom had a fall and she cut her head and so I was just uh, like a little bit shaken from that news and also because she's so far away and so I did not do the video and uh, accept to come on and apologize to everybody. But um, uh, I got so, so many of you actually sent beautiful wishes and thoughts for my mom. Thank you so much, all of you. She's on the mend. She's doing well. Um, she's, uh, she's had stitches, but she's healing and she's going to be fine. So thank you. Thank you, all of you. It's always such a relief. <laughs> you live so far away all kinds of feelings come up you know like even feelings of guilt that i'm not there right there for her and oh yeah um so today i wanted to share with you also something else that um it, and it's the statement i know i matter and um i wanted to speak about this statement a little bit because one number one is knowing that i matter was something I only realized when literally I had died from this world when I was in that near-death experience state. But um, some days ago, like earlier this week, uh, I started doing something which I've never done before. I started taking vocal lessons, as in trying to learn to sing. <laughs> And uh, so I had this teacher, a wonderful guy named David Kennett. Please feel free to look him up. David Kennett, awesome voice, awesome vocal teacher. So I hired him to uh, give me my first ever singing lesson ever in my life. And when he was teaching me how to project my voice and how to belt it out, he just, um, all of a sudden he said, he goes, I'm gonna give you a mantra which I want you to ponder on as you as you allow your voice to come through you and that mantra is i know i matter and when he said that i kind of went um i got goosebumps i totally got goosebumps because um because that statement that mantra that statement was one of the biggest lessons i learned when i was on the other side i was like oh my god that is so appropriate and um, I, I'll, most of my teachings are about teaching you how to love yourself. But why? Love yourself, why? Love yourself because you matter. Your spirit, your soul came here for a purpose. And so you matter. And most of us don't realize that we matter. We think that everybody else matters more than we do. And that's how I lived my life. And that's why I got sick because I didn't know I mattered. I put everybody else ahead of me, everybody. I put everyone in my family, everyone, not just in my family, but people in my community, my friends. I put everyone ahead of me and I didn't think that I mattered. Everybody else's problems mattered more than mine to me. Even when I got sick, even when I got really sick, I worried more about other people and inconveniencing other people with my illness than I did about taking care of myself. So even when other people went out of their way to help me because I was sick, I worried more about, oh my gosh, how am I going to repay them? Um, it burdened me that they were doing this. Instead of me receiving, it actually burdened me, which means that to me, I didn't matter. That's a sign when people do things for you, when you're unable to receive, it means that you don't believe that you matter. And so that was one of the biggest lessons I learned. And that's why I wanted to remind you, I wanted to remind you that you matter. 
And not only is it about you mattering, like in the grand scheme of things, to source, to the universe, to other people, you matter. But the point of this is that the, the, the mantra, the statement is, I know I matter. So even before my NDE, I always mattered, but I didn't know I mattered. So the thing is now is to bring it into your awareness and to know that you matter. That's the big shift, is that the difference was I always mattered, but I didn't know I mattered. And because I didn't know I mattered, I didn't allow myself to receive or be who I am or express who I am. I never allowed myself to fully, to fully just be. I never allowed myself to receive. And it wasn't even the illness, the cancer, that was the wake-up call for me. It wasn't even the illness that healed me from realizing that I matter. It was death, which is why I share what I share because I don't want people to have to die to learn this. I want you to know now. I want you to be aware now that you matter. So that's why this mantra just struck me. I wonder if you heard that. By the way, I want to give another shout out to Cheryl Birch because she's the one that sent me this microphone, which means I can now do videos like this outdoors and people on their motorbikes can have their full throttle on and I trust that you can still me hear me over that. <laughs> I live in this really cool hipster town where you get all kinds of people, including people like me. <laughs> um, so that was really the biggest lesson I learned was this realization that, wow, my soul came here for a purpose and I matter and not only that but I now know I matter and I know that I have a purpose and even if you don't know what your purpose is that's okay the first step is knowing that you do have a purpose and that you do matter in the grand scheme of things you matter and I used to always put everybody else's problems before my problems and even when I was getting really really sick if there was somebody else who was sick or someone else who had a problem I would be like, oh my God, I have to be there for them. What can I do for them? It, I would still put everything aside. I would put all my issues, I would put my illness aside and I would try to figure out what I could do for them, even if it made me sicker to expend more energy. And when I was on the other side, when I was in that NDE state, you know, as most of you know my story, I had literally reached final stages of, like my organs were shutting down and I had tumors the size of um, golf balls and my like I had it all over my lymphatic system from the base of my skull under my arms in my chest and my lungs were filled with fluid and I weighed 85 pounds and so I was really like gone I was and my organs were shutting down um, and so when I was on the other side, I wanted to know why did I get such a huge um, illness or such a huge wake up call just to give me the message that I need to love myself and I need to know I matter. I thought, couldn't you have given me, you know, I was like saying to source in general, couldn't you have given me a gentler wake up call? And this was the answer I got. The answer was that we were giving you gentler wake-up calls all the way along until they got stronger and stronger, but you weren't listening. You still continued to believe you don't matter and put aside all your problems, all your illnesses, everything, and still kept suppressing yourself and still kept going and thinking that everybody else mattered more than you did. No matter how big my problem, I still felt everybody else mattered more than I did. So the universe or source wanted me to know that, um, that it was actually trying to get my attention. And literally for me, it took death to get my attention. And so this is why I want you to know that source is actually on your side. When you get little wake up calls, it's your body working for you, not against you. 
Don't ever think of your symptoms as your enemies. Don't treat your body as a battleground. It's actually communicating with you all the time. And I wanted to mention that I speak a lot about this kind of thing in my online sanctuary. And um, I, have, I have recently opened the doors again for my online sanctuary, which is a membership platform. One of my dreams was to create a space, like a real physical space, a brick and mortar space for people who are um, highly sensitive or empaths, who are kind of sensitive for this world, where you're impacted by all the things that happen around you. And you're impacted emotionally and you feel things deeper than other people. And when you're someone like that, sometimes you feel symptoms in your body and just going to a doctor and having it treated medically isn't really the best answer for you. And I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, by all means go to the doctor. But for people who are really sensitive and people who are empaths and who feel emotions deeply, I want you to know that your emotions do impact. It, it impacts your energy, which impacts your physical body. And so I really believe that for people who are highly sensitive, that many of your physical symptoms and your illnesses have an emotional root. I know for me, I am a thousand and one percent sure that me getting sick and getting cancer was because I was super sensitive. I was an, I am an empath and it was also because I didn't believe that I mattered and I didn't love myself. I know exactly why I got sick. Um, and I really feel that people who are sensitive and empathic, you need a different route. You need a different way of operating in the world. You need to learn a different way of taking care of yourself and your health. It's not the mainstream way. And I know that in the mainstream way, and this is not about just being sick. It is even about you just being feeling like you don't fit here because you're kind of wondering why is the world so harsh and 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 so it's always been my dream to create like a sanctuary where like-minded people can come together and I'd always wanted to create like really a physical space like a brick and mortar place um, but when COVID struck it looked like it was going to get harder and harder for us to create such a space so we use that time to build an online space and so we we have now opened up this online membership platform called the sanctuary where like-minded people and empaths and all can come together and there is a little process like we are we we do actually ask you to take a little empath test before you get in and that's because we want to make sure that the people that once you join, you feel safe in there, that everybody in there are on, on the same page and we're all like-minded people. So I'll be including a link to that sanctuary if you're interested in joining. And also the other thing I'm super excited about is that events have opened up again. And I'm excited that um, at the end of the year in December, December 2nd to 5th, I will be doing an event in Sedona. It'll be a four day retreat in beautiful Sedona. And in that space, we will be able to do journeys together, like deep journeys um, to heal emotional trauma and help to even speak, uh, to communicate with our physical bodies. And we will be able to learn about journaling and we will, there will be some lecturing, there will be some breakout groups. And, but the main thing is we will create a, um, a sort of an energy vortex or a cocoon, a marinade where like-minded people can come together and elevate um, each other's and our energies. One of the things that I think is so important for empaths that I really want to leave you with is that if you are an empath and if you are someone who's super sensitive, I cannot stress highly enough how important it is <clears throat> for you to really focus on keeping your own energy high. One of the problems that sensitive people have is that we easily get drawn into the problems of the world and other people. We want to fix everything. That's the thing. We come here with this purpose, with this desire of wanting to heal, to help, to fix, to rescue. 
<clears throat> and that's beautiful. And that's a very noble cause. And it has to be nurtured, this aspect of you, um, this, this, this trait that you have has to be valued and nurtured and protected and it has to be fed and fueled. Most empaths don't know how to fuel that so that you can continue to help and heal and rescue and be there for everyone. What ends up happening for a lot of empaths and sensitive people is that we get caught up in the problems of the world and the problems of other people. And we forget that we too need to need a little bit of help and rescuing and healing and, and recharging of our batteries. And we become depleted. And what happens then is we become part of the problem instead of part of the solution. So basically, that's the crux of my message. As an empath, as a sensitive person, as a healer, as a teacher, if you relate to being any of those things, um, as a helper, as a healthcare worker, if you are any of those things, your energy is needed in this world. It is really needed. We need more of you, much more of you. So please, please, please value yourself, know that you matter, and take care of yourself. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Um, and uh, I do take care of myself. I make sure I get out in open air, in the sunshine, treat myself, do fun stuff. So I invite you to do the same for yourself. Thank you all so much. Can't wait to see you all next week.